to get this one underway. Three five-minute rounds should they need them in the Cage Warriors Bantamweight division. Lee Mitchell in the black and grey shorts. Nathan Fletcher in the orange. Ready? Yeah. Dan, I'm guessing you're going to enjoy this one. Should be lots of grappling and submission wrestling on display here, given the pedigrees of the two camps these two young men are fighting out of. And look, when a guy comes in with a pair of Sakharova well, shots on. I was just about to mention it. I'm hoping we see some uh, cartwheel guard passes if it hits the ground. Nice head movement there from Mitchell in that southpaw stance to get himself out of the way. He's finding a, finding a taller, rangier man in Fletcher. Double jab and a right to the body from Mitchell. Really nice controlling the distance here uh, by Mitchell, which is exactly what you need when you are the smaller fighter. You've got to be able to close that distance and get out of range so you can't be counter-struck. One of the prevailing themes that we, we've had over both trilogies, Dan, is that you know a lot of these guys just haven't been able to train and compete as normal uh, throughout this year, and I'm sure that's been somewhat similar for these two guys, but they have uh, both fought once already this year, so it's, it's the second fight for both these young men, so perhaps not as bad as, as someone who's maybe not fought since his back in 2019. It's great that Cage Warriors have been able to get these trilogy events yeah. out of the door this year and give these guys an opportunity to fly their trade. Well, that's it. It's not just about, you know, making great shows to entertain the fans, but these guys are fighters. They need to fight. That's what they do for a living. And it's what keeps them improving, training, and staying sharp. So it's very, very good to see. And that was a nice straight right hand from Fletcher there. Mitchell not looking too uncomfortable with the height and reach disparity. Neither man landed anything of incredible significance as of yet. It's very much a feeling out period so far in this first round. Okay, we've got our first clinch here. Control of the wrist here. There's a good chance that we might see a flying triangle attempted. And this is where we expected that this fight would end up at some stage. Obviously, both these gyms producing very well-rounded fighters in all aspects of the modern mixed martial arts game, but both with a very strong grappling pedigree. A nice break out that clinch by Mitchell. Oh, what a oh, break. Mitchell drops his man there. Fletcher trying to recover here, looking to sweep and get back to his feet, and he does. And it doesn't look like he's been affected too badly by that shot, perhaps just, just caught him unawares. Mitchell still firing them off, though. Nice double leg takedown there against the cage from Nathan Fletcher, though. Yeah, there was a bit of a type for a guillotine there, but... Fletcher doing a fantastic job of taking down in the side control, negating uh, any offence that can come from that guillotine. But Mitchell doing a good job of getting the legs back on the inside. Uh, releases the guillotine. Looking to uh, use a butterfly guard instead of the close guard here. Generally, when someone uses a butterfly guard, uh, it gives you the ability to stand up. You see someone in a close guard, they have the ability to pull the person in. So the butterfly guard is a bit of an indicator that the person wants to try and perhaps get back to the feet. I spoke about doing a cartwheel guard pass. We almost saw a cartwheel guard pass. Not, not quite there, but that's the attitude we want to see from Fletcher. Into half guard. Not really a, a very aggressive a half guard from Mitchell underneath there, but he managed to get back to a half butterfly. It's a better position. You can look to sweep by using that right leg or exactly this, try and get back to a normal butterfly guard position. But you can see the hip movement from Nathan Fletcher on top. Really, really good job. Mitchell doing a great job of getting back to his feet, though. Yeah, phenomenal stuff there from Lee Mitchell to get out from underneath his man. And he's going straight back to work with his hands here. Get 
Yeah, we almost become conditioned to think that, you know, in, in a battle of a shorter fight versus a taller fight, it's always going to be the taller guy with the advantage of striking, but not always the case at all. And we're seeing that here with Lee Mitchell. Yeah, tell Mike Tyson that. <laughs> I'm not brave enough to tell Mike Tyson anything. <laughs> I'm not brave enough to tell Lee Mitchell or Nathan Fletcher anything. These two prospects just put on a phenomenal first round here to kick off. Night two, the trilogy. Talk us back through some of the action here, Dan. That was that little combination that just sat, sat Fletcher down on the seat of his pants. Oh, and the corner team there, Jack Mason, a long-time Cage Warriors veteran himself, now a coach. Very pleased with the handiwork from uh, from Lee Mitchell. Yeah, that's definitely going to give Lee a lot of confidence, I think, in the striking department going into the ground. Uh, Fletcher definitely looking uh, more comfortable in those top positions on the ground. Some really nice little exchanges, really not able to get uh, too deep into the grappling, but some really nice work from both athletes, but especially from Fletcher on the ground. More ahead, he about to get this one back underway. Second round here of three. Touch of gloves, and we are underway. You see the hands of Nathan Fletcher very high and tight there as he stalks his man. Good work to circle out there from Mitchell rather than backing straight up. Don't want to get caught going straight backwards with a, a rangy amount of throwing straight shots at you. Oh, beautiful shot there underneath. Level change was fantastic. Looked like it was going to be an easy double leg, but then Mitchell did a good job of fighting it, but eventually the takedown does come and straight into a back position. This is fantastic, Fletcher. Mitchell uh, tried the Uriah Faber style <laughs> jumping knee there. It's one of those things where if it works, it's fantastic, but it does take you off balance. It does make it easier to be taken down. And you've got to believe it's exactly where Nathan Fletcher wants this one. Oh, step straight over into that top position. Beautiful transition. He was in mount for a second. Uh, Mitchell wanted none of that ground and pound from the mount position. He turns away, gives up his back, and Fletcher immediately sinks those hooks in. He's in quite a high position. Lee Mitchell doing a good job. He's going to try and shake Fletcher off the top. Now, but from here, uh, Fletcher does have the ability to switch into an armbar, but very nicely done by Lee Mitchell. Uh, getting out of a very, very bad situation and now finishing on top. I wonder if he's going to try and utilize this top position and try and inflict a little bit of a positional dominance of his own. We haven't seen him yet in a good position. Could even be trying to come round to the back from here. The defense wrestling there. We need to take down by... Mitchell, but Fletcher able to reverse into top position, and this is the kind of thrilling ground battle we were expecting from both these two young men. Yeah, a really nice reversal, beautiful time in there, and just felt where his man was slightly off balance and went for the uh, went for the reversal, managed to get it, which you don't see very often. Uh, from here, this is kind of what we've seen so far on the ground. Fletcher in these top positions, half guard. Uh, Mitchell not doing too much underneath here to try and sweep or anything, but just doing enough to not be put in a bad position, apart from that very quick mount uh, from that side control off of that takedown earlier on. Earlier on, we haven't seen Fletcher in a super dominant position. Really evenly matched contest here, and you would expect that looking at the records of these two young men, three professional wins each. Mitchell with just the one defeat to Liam Gittins, pulling up, who we're going to see later on, and uh, you know, left to Liam Gittins is certainly nothing to complain about. We have beautiful transition to the mount from here. Lee Mitchell looks like he's going to go for the same defense that worked last time, which is going to go and try and get those hips high. Fletcher doing a good job of actually, this is one of those times where you can use the fence to your advantage. You can actually lean against it and it keeps you upright. It can be in an advantageous position to try and work for the choke, something that you'll never get if you're just grappling on the mat. So he's utilizing the body triangle here to keep good control. Unfortunately, the body triangle is on the wrong side. This isn't the ideal side for the body triangle because it takes away a lot of your mobility and maneuverability of your legs to transition to other stuff. But if uh, Nathan Fletcher manages to get the arm underneath the neck, it is not going to matter at all. It's not quite under the neck, but you can still try and finish from this. Oh, big squeeze from Nathan Fletcher here. Yeah. Mitchell looking very uncomfortable, but at this level, very few people are going to tap just the pain. He's really got to get something serious on there. There's a nice elbow to the temple there from Fletcher, and a few more shots to go with it. 
So this is the sort of position where you want to switch out of that body triangle and transition into a belly down position. Once again, trying to lock off over that jaw, not having that much success with it, but really, really nice attacking from the back position relentlessly from him. In the corner, Mitchell telling him to, to try and turn in there, I believe. So can you see this position where he's got the back and he's upright against the, 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 uh, the cage wall there? It's a very unique position that you only get if you're inside a cage. Mitchell coming for a walk here. Fletcher trying to trip the legs. Flips over, but he's got caught there. Yeah, and this is going to be done. That is, you know, it does happen. People stand and then they try and... Oh, it's over. And I'm not sure if it was a tap there or a verbal submission, but that choke was on as tight as you like. And there's certainly uh, no, no protest in there from Lee Mitchell. And a very, very happy Nathan Fletcher. He was looking for that really naked choke for a long time now. Yeah, absolutely. When you stand up and you have someone on your back, it feels intuitive to try and dive to get the person off. But it's a huge risk because as you hit that dynamic movement, if the opponent is able to keep his composure and uh, throw on that choke, then it's going to be you're going to end up in a much worse position. Well, there was that knee off the uh, the single leg, and a beautiful counter trip there from Nathan Fletcher, and immediately taking the back there, Dan. So here we have. The standing back position here, you have to be very careful and as he rolls he opens up that neck just enough for the forearm to slide underneath and the ability to capitalize on that choke was just fantastic. So watch here, as he jumps that arm comes underneath. You've got to be very very careful when you have someone who is that fast on the neck, whatever you're doing there, you, you have to be careful that that forearm isn't going to come underneath. A very happy coach Ellis Hampson there in the next gen corner and this is the final seconds of the fight an incredibly tight rear naked choke let's throw it to our MC in the cage Mr Hal Chaplin ladies and gentlemen your referee Mr Daniel Movahidi calls a stop to this contest after 4 minutes and 18 seconds of round number 2 declaring your winner by way of rear naked choke in the red corner Nathan Fletcher what a finish from Nathan Fletcher he was looking for it for a long 